there. Go there. All right. I think we're about to get it, get it popping in a couple seconds here. Uh, let's see. Redirecting technology. Technology is our friend, ain't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, what would we do before the internet came out? We was in trouble, wasn't Bruh, we? I think back, I'm like, how? How were we surviving? How what do you do without a smartphone? <laughs> right. Say, it's too many different things. Trying to combine this with that. All right, Elijah, how you doing today? Sir. Brother man, I'm well, man. How are you? Good, good. I think we are live on the Facebook group here in the Woke Real Estate Investors Group. And I just wanted to, um, you know, come on and share your story on basically, you know, how you found your deal, how you got into real estate, stuff like that. And uh, I kind of put these videos together to try to help inspire other people who are thinking about dipping their toe in the water, thinking about stepping their game up and saying, I want to do this wholesale and I want to do this real estate stuff. How right. can they do it? So um, if you could just tell me a little bit of background. Where did you, um, where did you first find out about wholesaling or real estate or any of this stuff? Yeah, pleasure being here, Chris. Thanks for reaching out, and uh, you know, big up to you and what you're doing, inspiring the people. This definitely played uh, a role in me um, knowing that this was doable. Not your, you know, not your platform per se, but you know, just seeing other people that look like me doing this. So, really appreciate you for having me. Um, so, I found out about wholesaling literally on YouTube University, man. YouTube University. Um, I, you know, my wife and I were, were pretty into being financially sound. So we, we spent about 34 months focusing on eliminating all our consumer debt. So once we were getting close to the end of um, being debt free, um, 34 months of paying off $162,000. Um, Whoa, you, you paid off how much? 162K. In Damn, what's that student loan stuff? Or? Yeah, a big chunk of it was student loan, two undergrads between me and her, and then she did the grad school thing. Um, and then we had, you know, small credit card and, um, and, um, and cars. So that was our main objective was clearing all the debt. So once we were getting close to the end of being of the debt free journey, I started thinking like, man, what's going to be next? You know, I always was intrigued by real estate. I thought I was going to be, I was thinking of getting like actual my, my, uh, my, real, my real estate license. Cause I thought that's what you're supposed to do if you're going to. You know, doing it in real estate. That's just what yeah, I they say. Go get your license. Go get yeah. your license. You need that. You can't make no exactly. money without a license. <laughs> exactly. So that was just my assumption. My assumption is that's next steps is go get a license. So I was thinking about it, but I told my wife, I'm like, yo, I'm really intrigued by real estate. So random, random evening, I was just on YouTube, you know, looking up real estate investing. And that's the first time I ever heard of this term, uh, real estate wholesaling. And it was Maxwell and uh, Brian Irigbu, who Brian is my homie now. Um, the big bro, the big homie, House Brian. Yeah. yeah, I was buying Brian. I was buying Brian. That's, that's a real dude right there. So we actually super close now. But um, his interview with Max was kind of what was stuck to me the most out of all the different wholesaling content that I saw. I just remember him making 100K a year part time. I'm like, what? And the old concept just sounded so simple, you know? So that was my first introduction to wholesaling. And I just, you know, I pride myself on taking action is I binge watch YouTube for about 36 hours. And then from there, I just started taking action. Like I got a Craigslist, started calling um, Fizbo's. I um, got call rail, got numbers and just started doing all the things that I, that I heard you needed to do. I didn't really worry about what, you know, I just worried about the next thing I needed to do to start taking action. And I remember like I saw like a caller script online and I used it like the second person I talked to on Craigslist, like the old conversation, like just fit the old script. I'm like, yo, this is really working. <laughs> I'm like, hey, this is real. All I got to do is jump in the yeah. water and see if I can swim. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm like, dude, this, this is literally, this dude's following my script. But anyway, so that's how I got introduced to wholesaling. Um, as you know, with our conversation, I didn't get no deal for a year and we can get into that whenever you want, but you know, I took action. Um, it wasn't perfect, but I just kept at it for a year before I finally got my last deal last week. Mm, a whole year. So, so was that, uh, was that hard on you or were you like really in it for the year or were you like in and out? Like, I'm just trying a little bit, or you felt like you weren't giving enough effort. What made you think it took a whole year? Man, that's a fantastic question. I know it was lack of consistency. I was consistent at a certain time, 
Um, let me put it like this. I, I was working hard, but not working smart. Mm. You know, one of the things looking back, you know, right, you know, you know, looking back at it, what I should have done is just start u- utilizing tools that I knew were out there to work a lot smarter. So, for example, I started cold calling. I got a Spokio account. I started looking up, you know, I think I bought like a short 250 list on list source. I thought I was going to get like a home run deal. Like I, <laughs> I bought a 250 <laughs> list. I'm like, I'm about to be an investor. Let's go. So, you know, I started calling that list, but, you know, I was copy pasting, you know, find the address, use Spokio or truepeoplesearch.com, you know, free platforms, copy the address in there, look for owner number one, paste that number into call rail, hit dial, they don't pick up, hang up, copy paste, you know, so it was just, so I was- Tedious, huh? Just tedious work. Super tedious, super tedious. So I would put in three, four hours a day, um, you know, five days a week, and I'm like, man, I'm not feeling momentum. So that gets discouraging. So I would follow the bandwagon for a little bit. I like about halfway through, I got super discouraged, you know, and I was off like a month or two. So long story short, I really think it was just not working smarter and not doing it consistently. If I went hard, if I went hard enough and when, you know, when I discussed with you, like when I started seeing momentum was when I told myself I got to go hard consistently is when I saw the most momentum. Yeah, I mean, it makes a difference, and that's what kind of helped me because I haven't even been in the game a year yet, and that's what helped me close a bunch of deals because I came in and put systems in place because I came from a business background already. So it was like, I know I need that phone to ring. I need people to know that, hey, I buy houses, we buy houses. If they don't know you, they can't flow you, right? So it's like, you know, I I didn't do a lot of cold calling. I did more, you know, like bandit sign, stuff like that because I wanted them people to call me because that's a lot easier to convert a person that calls you and some cold person that's like, hey, yeah, uh, you think about selling? You know, right, right. And that's what I think helps. So systems make a big difference. So um, so as far as systems, what what other uh, ways are you looking for deals or – Actually, let me let me go back to the deal you got. This twenty five thousand dollars deal. How did you find that deal? Yeah, so so part of my issue was that I was spreading myself. I think not too thin, but you know I did a bad sign consistently for a month, and I didn't see enough, so I stopped doing that. Um, so I just concentrated on a cold call. So I just started really listening. I mean, I dove into content. I was on YouTube every single day. I was podcasting every day. I'm a DJ, and I stopped listening to music. I would listen to nothing but Audible. Um, and podcast and YouTube just to really understand. So what I kept hearing was tax delinquent just seemed like it was a good list. So um, I went to my accountant's website, downloaded the list. I did the batch skip trace and just put it, by this time I had Mojo Dialer. So put it in Mojo Dialer and started calling. And this, I mean, by this point, I had talked to so much homeowners that I knew what a motivated set of sound like. Yeah, so see that experience. See, that's the little thing yeah. people don't want to do. See, if they never try it, they won't get the experience to know exactly. how to feel, how to, you know, you can, weed, you can weed them out real quick when you know about it, right? Exactly, exactly. So even though um, their asking price was much, much higher than what, you know, my uh, MAO, I already knew just listening to them, they were motivated. And one of the mistakes that I made early on is if they didn't fit the wholesaling formula, even though they were motivated, I was just like, man, they're not trying to sell at a wholesale price. And I wouldn't even bother making the appointments. But shout out to my guy, Willie, uh, Willie Coleman, man. That, that dude was a G, but we would do like, we would start doing like weekly calls of just accountability and kind of telling him what I'm doing. And he kept telling him like, yo, you gotta book the appointments. Like, I don't care, book the appointments. If they say they wanna sell, forget the numbers, go build more rapport in front of them. And that's what I did with the sellers is, even though the number was way high, I went in front of them man and it just it just unraveled quick yeah shout out to my bro uh willie coleman yeah 18 year old just did his first hundred thousand dollar month i said good night i gotta step yeah. my game up so you yeah. know this just show you what you can do a hundred thousand dollars in a month people yep. can't do that in a year bro you know, willie, but, couldn't, willie couldn't even sign his own check for the first year because he was he's 17 year old but it was a beast we met at we live 18 and we connected right away at I mean, that's, that's low key my mentor, you know, like we, we would have weekly calls for months and he wanted to see me win. So shout out to my guy, Willie. Yeah. So thinking about that, uh, mentors, coaching, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think people should reach out to people that's in the game to try to, you know, learn it? Or do you think they should just go and try to do the YouTube university thing and figure it out on their own? 
I think a little bit of both. I, I think anyone, so I have other businesses I have. So going back to everything, right? When we shared our story on social media and when we, when our story hit like Good Money America, like we went viral, right? Everybody was blowing us up, you know? And you want to help everyone, but if you haven't taken the steps yourself to try to learn, to me, you're just, you're not in a position to be reaching out to people. And so for me, I YouTube, I took action. I didn't meet Willie until October at We Live 18, you know, and my guess is Willie saw that I was taking action and he was, he, he was ready to help me. So before you go to a mentor, don't just say, hey man, can you mentor me? You know, I, I think you gotta bring something to the table and you gotta let them see that, um, you know, them, them mentoring you is worth their time. Cause everyone is busy, man. Like I'm, my time is, I'm, I love helping people, but my time is so vital to me. Yeah, I understand. I mean, I agree with you a hundred percent. Cause it's people like, yeah, how do you, uh, how do you do DocuSign? YouTube that mug, man. I mean, you gotta, yeah. you know, that's basic stuff. I mean, come to me with something. I mean, I know I, I like to help people too, but like, if you want to do that first step, you know, I'm not motivated to even give back at that time. But if I see somebody right. does like, hey man, I'm trying this, this ain't working. I'm like, yeah, I want to help you out because I see you got the hunger and you feel like you want to do this. And you know, that's, right. that's what a lot of people need to do. I feel like. hundred percent, hundred percent action taken, man. Like literally I learned everything on YouTube between YouTube and the Facebook groups, I learned what wholesaling was. I knew what the steps were. Obviously, there's the deep, you know, the deeper parts that you know you need someone experience to really, you know, once you know, try to figure out how to properly write a contract and things like that. But for the basic stuff, you know, like no one should be loading on my phone saying what what is Elliot's wholesale. You know, like things like that to me is just you know you don't need a mentor for that. You don't need a mentor. <laughs> go fill your way forward first. And then once you've taken action, you know the right questions to ask a mentor. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. I mean, that's right exactly what it is. Once you get and you find a problem, like I ran into a roadblock. Hey, I'm stuck at this point. I got this person to want to sell, but I don't really know if it's a deal or not. That's when you go reach out to somebody and say, hey, I need some help now. But if you're just like, uh, you know, I don't know, even nothing, you got to go do the basics first. You know what I mean? Just at least a little bit. That's what I think. But, and don't um, get me wrong, because, uh, sorry, just to add one more thing. At We Live 18, I was doing the same thing. You know, at We Live, I had taken action. I thought I was taking all this massive action, but I was asking all these futuristic questions because there was so much, like, people doing, you know, well, not, there was a good amount of people doing deals at We Live 18 that I wanted to ask all those questions, right? And a lot of it was just futuristic questions that I didn't even encounter those issues yet, you know? Like, and I look back now, I'm like, I had no reason asking. I did just focus on being consistent and focus on taking action. Once I get to that bridge, we can cross there. You can look for a subject expert to ask, hey, how do you tackle, you know, a lien on this property that I have on the contract? You know, like something like that. You yeah, know? exactly. Because you bring a, something to the thing. Because like people do that even with attorneys. They're like, oh, I need to go get an attorney to do this and that. So yeah, they're going to charge you. You better go in there and right. say, yeah, I want to close this deal. Do y'all close a deal like this? Here's my contract. And they're going to give right. you some free advice right then versus, right. oh, well, let's do all this other stuff. I mean, it just makes it harder. And I, I mean, exactly. I agree. It's just got to take that action. So um, in regards to this deal here, what it, um, so you say you found it on a tax delinquent list and you looked it up on a free site, like True People Search, one of those, you say? No, by the time, I mean, by this point, um, I am... I am looking, wait, to like skip trace it or what? Yeah, so how did you find, so you, you bought a list off of a list source, I guess, right? No, so I went on the county's website, downloaded um, text delinquent list, and then by this time I, I was using um, batch skip tracing for all my skip trading services just because, you know, they were a reasonable price and they were so accurate, my contact rate, so good with them. So I just stuck with them. So this was a batch skip tracing that I did, and I started cold calling the list. Um, I, do you want me to just break down the, the deal? Yeah, 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 that's fine. Yeah, what was the numbers and stuff on it? So I called I call the owner. Um, the first time I actually got in contact with someone, it was the contractor that was working on the house. So this dude knew, like, they were super close, the contractor and the owner. He knew everything about the house because they did all the work on it because it was a rental property. So he was like, yeah, it's a great property. I did the roof myself. I know they want to sell this house. And they actually have two other properties they're looking to sell on like okay, let's talk, <laughs> you know? So he was like, I did the roof, I did the garage, the two car garage, you know, he was telling me all the great things about it. So I'm like, perfect. So it was like, call back tomorrow, talk with the owners. So I called back the next day, talked to the owners. They said, yeah, we're, you know, we wanna sell it, it's a rental. You know, I asked the motivation or trying to understand the motivation and they're from the Philippines. They wanna take their money back home, actually start a real estate 
business. So they wanted quick cash. And I asked them, well, I mean, if you thought I listed with a realtor, like, you know, it sounds like a pretty nice house, you know? And they're like, well, the realtor said we gotta, we did talk to a realtor, so we gotta fix a little bit more and we just don't wanna do that because we already take out loans to fix it. So I'm like, man, it sounds great. So ARV, I'm looking at it, ARV was about 180 or so, you know, 180, 190-ish. They wanted 160. Mm. This is not a whole <laughs> wholesale deal, but so again, to everyone listening that hasn't done a first deal yet, man, never, never just rule out based on the fact that they don't fit the formula. You know, if you hear motivation, that's one thing that I do now. When I get to the point where I have so much leads that I can pick and choose, then maybe I'll start getting a little more picky on who I go. But for now, I'm going to all appointments. So I'm so glad I went to this appointment. So they wanted 160. And I knew that was not, you know, a deal at that point, but I heard motivation. So I say, you know, let me come out and see. And I asked them, like I've heard, if I come over there and we agree on terms, we agree on numbers, are you ready to sell me your house? They said, yes, we want to sell this house if we can agree. I'm like, beautiful. And I'm like, are you open to negotiation? Because, you know, I want to help you out, but the numbers got to work. They say, yeah, we're open to negotiation. I'm like, beautiful. Set the appointment, went over there, just focused on rapport. You know, we talked for a while, like almost 40 minutes of just talking, but just, you know, getting to know each other. I know about her family. And I was talking to the mom of the owner. Owner is actually the one that owns it, the son, but the mom is who I talk to the most. So we talk, we build rapport, build rapport. We started talking, so I said, well, you know, tell me how much are you thinking you want for this house? They said, well, you're the expert, so you tell me. I'm like, damn. Mm, they love that, don't they? <laughs> they love that. <laughs> so I try to shoot back at them. I'm like, well, you know, my goal is hopefully I can, I can meet you at a number that works, so what are you thinking? They said, no, you don't want to hear what you have. Again, I learned everything on podcasts and YouTube, everything. And negotiation, everything is just from self-studying with my free time. I learned that if that first number you throw out there, if your if your gut is not feeling all bubbly because the number is so low that you feel ashamed to say it, it's not low enough. Mm. They asked for 160 on the phone. I looked around. I try to have a game face. I said, "Man, if I gotta put money in this house and that for uh, maybe my partners to make money, I was like, I'm thinking maybe 70." I was waiting for them to say, "Man, you better get the hell out right now." Rather than saying that, they were like. Well, once I heard that, well, <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so you offered them $70,000? Yes. And I thought I thought I was going to get cursed out and then, you know, tell them, well, 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 I'm just telling you what my number is, you know, then negotiate from there, you know, just anchor low. He's like, well, that's kind of lower than what we thought. At that point, I almost knew it was a wrap. I'm like, this dude didn't kick me out. They cursed me out. You know, he's really considering this. So I'm like, Damn. I, I might have a deal in my hand. So they were like, well, that's much lower than what we thought. Can you do 100? Now, mind you, before I got there, I kept calculating my maximum allowable offer. I said, if I'm anywhere close to 100, I'm locking it in. If I'm close to 100, this is a deal because this house was cosmetic. You know, I knew that talking to the contractor, I knew it was not going to be a big repair job because I've had, I had three, four contracts, a property under contract before this that didn't work out because the numbers just didn't make sense. Right. And so we had some title issues. So, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to enough owners um, in this one year span. So my goal was to get it at about 100. So when, when he came back and said about 100, I was like, man, I got a deal. So, of course, I didn't take that. I was like, man, I'm looking around some more. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm like, well, we got to do this. You know, we still got to update the kitchen. I was like, maybe 80. And he was like, well, let's meet halfway. So we agreed on 86.5. Okay? Okay. 86.5, we locked the contract in. I locked it in. Um, and I knew, I knew it was a deal. Now, because it was a tenant in there, I knew I had to blast it with caution. Okay? So because it was a tenant in there, they were kind of, and I've dealt with this too, where the owner was kind of sticky with the keys. They don't want to just give you the keys and have you put a lockbox in there. So again, because of my one year of, of just taking action, I had talked to enough owners, I got enough property on the contract, I kind of understood the steps by now. And also in the process, I built a pretty decent cash buyer list. Nothing crazy, you know, I, I was sitting at like 35, 40 maybe, of, you know, just from posting my ads, people that were interested that I knew were serious. Um, and even cold calling, I, you know, I'll talk to a lot of landlords like, no, I'm not selling the house, but if you have something, you know, I, I can buy fast. So I was adding them to my cash buyer list. So. I 
signed a contract. My wife and I went to Ikea from there to go get some stuff for the house. So as I sat down on the Ikea line, I blasted it out with text to just six of my buyers that I knew were serious. I already talked to them enough to know these guys were legit. And how much did you send it out for? I blasted it out at 102. Okay? But I said it at 102, um, great photos, everything, everything that they would want to be able to make a decision, you know, before even seeing the house. One of my guy, one of my cash buyers called me instantly. He was like, Elijah, listen, I never make an offer on a house I've not seen, sight unseen. But this one, I'm ready to buy it like now. I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, that's a sign, ain't it? You're like, wait a oh. minute, something ain't right. Oh, yeah, well, it might be too yeah. low. Yeah, so I started thinking that way. At this point, I'm just trying to get my deal done, right? So um, so he was like, I'm ready to see it. Can I see it tomorrow? So I told the owners, I'm like, my partners want to see it. Can we get in there like ASAP? So next day we got in there. Um, with, he looked at it. He was like, I just need five minutes. All you did not have in the photo was just, a, was just an electrical box. Let me just go in there five minutes, look at the electrical box. I seen everything that I want to see. We'll, we'll sign it. I said, make sure you come with your, you know, non you know, not refundable because that's what I heard that everyone say. I'm like, show up with your non-refundable, 2,500, if you're serious, and we'll talk business. And so, and he almost bought my, one of my other property that was just, uh, that just didn't make sense. Um, so we went in there, five minutes, got in, got out. He was like, yep, I want it. So it's pouring rain, by the way. It's Memorial, Memorial Monday. It's mm. pouring rain out here. And so, we sit back in his truck and shout out to my guy, Willie, again, because all this entire step, I'm talking to <laughs> Willie. I'm like, yo, Willie, I think we finally got one, man. So Willie's excited for me. So Willie told me, he's like, yo, when you go in there, you so excited, you got a good deal. And I know I had a lot of meat on the bone. He's like, when you talk to the buyer, let him know once he agrees that, listen, how much are you willing to pay for this property to not have me blast it out or have any other buyer look at it? Mmm, an extra little hack, huh? Yeah, extra little gem right there. So, and I knew I had it a good deal. I knew it was a steal. So, um, I was like, bet. So, it's pouring rain. We're sitting in this truck. He's got the check ready. He showed me the check. He's like, yo, here's the check. Let's shake hands. Get the assignment contract. I'm like, well, hold on. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I said, listen, I sent this out on purpose. Because I did put on there, because I even knew that before I talked to Willie, that I knew, I knew it was a steal. It was almost too good to be true. This house barely needed work. They just wanted quick cash. So I put on there our best offer when I blasted it out to my six cash buyers. So to me, because I knew I was probably going to get one for more that I wasn't even asking, but I just wanted to get a deal done. So I, I'm sitting in this truck because it's pouring away the rain out. So we're negotiating this truck. I said, well, listen, what's the most you can pay for it? And I'm not going to send it to nobody. It's yours. He's like, well... I didn't realize we were here to negotiate. I'm like, well, we're here to negotiate, so let's talk. Ah, yeah, I know he was dealing with a beast on our right. He's like, we're in here, baby. We're in the rain. Let's do this. I'm like, let's do this. So um, he goes from 105 to, so I blasted out 105. He was going to pay for that. He agreed. He said, how about 110? I'm like, man, I knew this is a deal. So this dude just jumped 5K. That quick on one, one question. Quick on one question. He went to 1K. I mean, I'm sorry, he went to 110. And so we talked a little bit, build rapport. I came back. I said, man, is that the best you can do? Just another, another classical negotiation line just to see. Um, is that the best you can do? He said, 112.5. Let's shake hands on it right now. We'll make it happen. At that point, I didn't want to get greedy. He's a great cash buyer. I'm calculating in my head. I'm like, yo, this is a home run. <laughs> 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 I, ran, I ran out to my... You, you know something wrong if they bid <laughs> themselves up. It's one thing yes. to be going the other way, but if somebody exactly. bid themselves up, is that the best you can do? Now, I've used it on sellers. Now, I've never used that on a buyer. Same I, here. I'm Same like, here. damn, a buyer heard. went up on this price. I can do yes. one five. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've never negotiated with a buyer. I mean, that was my first real buyer that, you know, I was going to lock an assignment contract. Well, actually, that's... But anyway, so, yeah, I was like, whoa, this is working. So, went in the rain, grabbed my assignment contract, signed the paperwork. And um, we were locked in. And so that was, a, that was Memorial Monday. Tuesday, I dropped the paperwork to the title company. Friday, we're at the closing table. Wow, they moved quick, sir. Man, same day they came back with a clear title. I was every step of the way, I couldn't sleep anymore. I'm like, this is really happening. 
because I was just waiting for something to come back, you know? You know it, yeah. I know that feeling, like, man, so, it's going to be something wrong with the title. Or exactly, it. exactly. So 26 is what I was supposed to make. Um, the day before, I got a text, actually the morning of closing, I got a text from the seller. A long text, I'm like, oh, man, here we go. I'm like, this is what. <laughs> I'm like, Something to happen. You already know it, right? I'm like, this is it. So the long text saying, Elijah, you know, we really appreciate everything that you've done. We're sorry, but the tax that we owe on it is more than what we anticipated. It's $1,800 more than what we anticipated, you know, so we need you, you know, to just be able to, you know, work with us on the, on the purchase price. So I call my cash buyer. I'm like, yo, um, this lady, this is what she's saying. Can we do anything to try to help her out? You know, cause I really obviously don't want to feel deal to fall apart, but I also want to give her what she wants. Cause I knew there's a lot of meat on the bone. Cash buyer said, I would love to, but I literally, I pre- um, pre-signed the closing documents so that we would be able to close. And I already, he said, I literally am walking out of the title company. So if we want to close today, we can't do that. And I want to take no chance. I'm like, we're closing today, no matter what. Exactly. What nobody says. So I call her back. I'm like, look, my partner is funding the deal. He already dropped off the check to make sure we can close today. So I can't give you $1,800, but guess what? Between me and you, I'm going to split the $1,800. i will take 925 you take 925 and let's just split the difference uh, of the money that you want us to pay more on. She said, that was fine. I called the title company. They make the adjustments on the paper so that it comes from my assignment fee. So we brought it from 26,000 to 25 something, which I was yeah. perfectly fine with. So, so, so you a master negotiator over here. Cause that's what I'm hearing all through this. I mean, you got, I mean, I thought I was pretty good, but I'm hearing you do weeds and ducks and cause see most people, they would have heard the, the seller say that, Oh, I need 1800 for my tax. And they would have folded like a napkin. And just been like, right. oh, man, they, I got to make the deal go through. But you said, no, 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 we can negotiate. I'll split that with you to make the yeah. deal go through. Now, that was genius of you. I, I, th I thought about doing that. But then, you know, this deal was so good. One, my wife actually was helping me, too, of just um, kind of giving me thoughts on, you know, split it with her. Obviously, we didn't want to lose a deal over $1,800. But I also were thinking if I just say yes right away, you know, you might, the seller might start thinking like, man, am I doing something wrong here? You know, like, he's just jumping at. You know, because we did that when I was negotiating with the seller originally, when it was like, well, okay, let's just meet halfway. I was like, sure, that's fine. You know, so I didn't want to make them start thinking like, maybe I'm just, maybe I should be thinking about this twice. So I was like, I can't give everything you want, but let's split, let's split that, that difference. Yeah. And it's a similar thing just happened with the last deal I did. Uh, I just bought a house on a, uh, you know, no money down or whatever. Right. And the guy nice. wanted a, a 10 year, but uh, we agreed to a 10 year balloon originally, you know, I got to have it paid off within 10 years. And so right. he called me back like, hey, yeah, I'm getting older. I think I really want to do like a five-year. You think we can do five years? I was like, well, how about we do seven-year balloon? He said, yeah, nice. great. So, I mean, I bought myself two more years from asking the question. Right. And like, just like I just said, most people just automatically give people what they ask for. Right. You don't have to do that. You can negotiate. But that's that's right. comes with confidence and knowing that, you know, you got to have a poker face on. You can't just go in and just, yeah, they want this. I got to do what they want. Not all the exactly. time. Work exactly. the deal out. Exactly. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta not make them think like they're they're giving something because they'll start thinking twice. At least that's the way I looked at it. And that's exactly what they will do. They'll feel like, oh well, I can just tell him anything. He'll sign off. He'll do whatever I say. Uh uh. Yeah. We can negotiate. I'll work with you. We on the right. same team. How can we make this come together? You know, exactly. you know that you know we on the same team. Exactly. All right. So you got this twenty five thousand dollar assignment. So you assigned this deal, right? Yep, hundred percent, hundred percent. I was, you know, most people say, "Oh, if it's over ten k, you got to do the double closing." What do you think about that? I mean, it's another way of vetting your cash buyer. This way I looked at it. My cash buyer was like, it was. He kept saying, "Dude," because he, he wanted to see the, the copy of the purchase agreement. I went to Willie. I'm like, "Yo, this dude's asking for a purchase agreement. Like, That's pretty normal. He needs to understand what your original agreement is, which makes sense." So he's like, "Just write, you know, just, um, you know, just black out your purchase price." And all the other terms are there. So the, the dude was, I mean, he was very, very straightforward about he wants to simply make money, which was great, but I didn't want to take no chance. So the entire time, the entire time, I just make sure I never saw my original um, purchase price until we got to the closing table, which he wasn't even there at the closing table. So I don't know if he ever saw um, my, my um, original purchase price, but I don't know. I didn't, I didn't care to, to, to double close because I'm like, if it falls through, I know I got a good deal. I'm going to find somebody else and I'm never going to do a deal with him again because that tells me that he cares about how much I make. Exactly. And you got to ask him that, you know, what do you think about, you know, uh, how do you feel if I made a hundred thousand on a deal, would you be mad? You know, I asked yeah. him, you know, and, and I did too. Let these I people did too. push you around. 
I did too, because I heard that from Max. You know, Max, during We Live 18, that's one of the last questions you ask when you are betting your cash buyers. You know, where do you like to buy? What's kind of condition? Um, what's the cost? What, you know? And the last question is, if you find out that, I made, that I'm making 100000 on this deal because I got it for a dollar and I'm assigning it to you for 101 do you care? And if they say, well, you know, and I had cash buyers like that, that I don't send, I don't, I didn't, I never send any of my deals. Really? To. So you put them on the blacklist or the know the X list or yeah. no more deals. A hundred percent. They're like, well, I don't think wholesalers. I'm like, bro, do you know how much work we do? Do you know what I'm work I'm putting in every day? Do you know how much work I'm putting in like calling these people, spending hours on a dialer and you want to count my pocket? So, um, he was, he was very clear that he did not care how much I make, but just to be safe, I didn't let him see it to the end. But I don't, I don't know. I, I, this as of right now, I don't, that was my first deal. So I guess maybe that will change in the future. But as of right now, I don't think I care to double close. Yeah, that's good. I mean, he came a long way. So did you feel like that whole year was a long wait? Or do you feel like that went pretty quick? Man, a little bit of both, man. Because if you take an action, it does feel like each step you're getting closer. But it's frustrating, you know, because you see all of them doing deals and you see in groups and you're happy for them. But like, People are doing deals in three months, you know, four months, one month, you know, people that are taking forever, it's like seven months. And I'm like, dude, I have home businesses, you know, like I thought it was going to be a breeze because I'm comfortable talking to people. I'm a people person, you know, like I'm doing all those things like I'm and where, what am I doing wrong? So it was frustrating. So that made it feel long. But, you know, one thing that did help me is when I started caring about KPIs and before I closed my first deal, when I started listening to a lot of podcasts, like, um, like real estate instructors, you would hear a lot of the same numbers of how many calls it takes to get a lead and how many leads it takes to get a contract signed, how many contracts converts into a deal. Yeah, it's a numbers game, right? It's a numbers game. And once I knew that, I'm like, I went to Mojo, I pulled all my calls and I'm like, I'm not even calling as much as I think I am. So first of all, I need to just, I need to ramp up my calls. And so the month of May, May 1st, I sat down and said, I gotta make 300 calls a day. Six days a week, no matter what. If I got to break it up between morning and evening, I got to make three hours. So my wife knew that if right after dinner, I got to go to the dollar and I got to make my calls. So once I make that consistency, some call that coincidence, but it's not coincidence. It's a numbers game. And sure enough, middle of May, I got, and so when I sat down and calculated my KPIs, I knew that here's how much calls I need to get my first deal. Mm. And what's a KPI for people who don't know who's watching a live stream? Oh, yeah. So that's key performance indicators. So that's kind of, that's a lot of, the more deals you do, the more you start understanding that all you got to do is reverse that number. Whatever it took to get that first deal, you just look back at the numbers. And that's like, it's crazy. Like, it's crazy how, how it's true. If it's you look a at, numbers game. I mean, it's just straight math. Game. Math Numbers don't lie. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And I calculated how much it dials it was going to take me. And that's exactly what it took me to get my first deal. So. And for those watching on the live stream, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in here. We'll try to get to them before we wrap up everything here shortly. Um, and as far as um, building up cash buyers list, do you feel like people should get their buyers list first or should they go ahead and find a deal first? That's another common, I guess, argument in the wholesaling world, right? Every, the people that I care about, that I, that I see do deals, tell me all the same thing. If you got a great deal, the buyers will come. You know, Brian preaches that. Max preaches that. Willie told me that. That's just what, you know, I don't think there's one right or wrong, but to me, I'm like, I don't, what am I building buyers list for? And this day and age, like I had, I had profits on a contract that I post on Facebook marketplace and my phone is blown up. So I'm like, if I get a good deal, they're going to show up. So I just focus on talking to sellers and finding a good deal that I know I can move fast. So I would, I would say find a good deal at a discounted prop, uh, at a discounted price and you didn't find a buyer, man. Like, Exactly. I mean, I agree with that 100% because, you know, if you find a deal, that buyer, everybody a buyer. You a buyer at a dollar, right. $500, you get a deal exactly. so low, it's all kind of buyers. The lower you get that deal, the more buyers you're going to have because everybody yeah. wants that deal. And that's another thing I've learned just from being in this real estate game, too, that there's more money out here than you can ever spend. There's a shortage of deals. There's not a shortage exactly. of buyers. There's not a shortage of money. There's a shortage of actual finding deals. And that's where wholesalers yeah. come in and put all the things together. Deals. Now, many cash buyers started, like, even before I did my first deal, I had two lunch. Like, yo, I see what you're doing. A lot of them thought I was a big shot. Not that I was lying, but I just carried myself in the manner, because I've, I've done it for almost a year, that everyone thought I was, like, a big wholesaler. Not everyone, but there's certain cash buyers. So they bring them out to lunch. They're like, yo, you know, 
please put me on your, you know, on your kind of your favorite. <laughs> you are because, like me? You are, yeah, okay? Bro, like, I, got, I, got lunch, I got two lunch outings because like you said, the scarcity of deals. The dude that bought my property, you know, he's great, but he's paying $10,000 a month to a franchise just so we can get inbound calls. Wow. Calls. That's, that's his marketing is paying 10 grand to this franchise to get inbound calls. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that just tells you how much, you know, hunger for deals are out there. So if I can bring you a deal, 60, 70 cents to a dollar, like you're going to be all over. You're going to find a buyer, I think. Yeah. I mean, I agree with that. There's nothing but deals out here. And that's what, if you can find them, that's the tricky part. Right. People don't want to get out and do the work. They're like, oh, well, I'm just going to do a little bit. And that's another thing, too, like you were saying a little bit ago about, you know, you got to reach out and touch more people because you don't know yeah. what's going to happen. I mean, I even had to do that myself. Like, wait a minute, am I, am I touching enough people? So right. where, you know, deals are going to come in because, you know, you don't know what's going to be a deal. You don't know yeah. if it's going to be a wholesale deal or any other kind of creative strategy deal. You don't know right. until you right. actually talk to the people, see what they're doing, ask good questions. That's my position on all of this stuff. I just try to ask people good questions because, I mean, that's yeah. they're going to tell you everything you want to know to close them on later. Yep. Yep. That's 100 percent true. The more sellers you talk to, the more you get closer to the next deal. It's kind all of right now. And then uh, did you have any other tips or tricks or anything that you know of that would help somebody that's kind of just getting in the game? That's probably, I don't know, 30 days in and like, I don't know what else to do. I'm kind of learning. What else would you say for somebody to do that's in that position? Man, I would say wholesaling is super elementary when it comes to the concept. It's super easy, right? Get a, get a discounted property, get on the contract, raise on the contract. That's it. That's the old game right there. So it's simple, but the actual work is hard. And you can't come in here thinking it's, you know, it's a get rich quick skin, you know? So I think you got to come in with the mentality that you got to put in the work. You know, once you understand that, if you just get, I, I got obsessed. My wife got so tired of listening to wholesale podcasts nonstop. I got obsessed with this game, like obsessed. Like that's all I did day in, day out. That's the first thing I do in the mornings, the last thing I do in the night. It's just, you know, it's just engraving myself with content so that when opportunity presents itself, I would be ready, you know? So that was my, my tip number two. And number three, you gotta just take action. You gotta take action. Like don't wait to be all perfect and, you know, read all the books and did all the, you know, get your LLC ready and your business card. You gotta just get up and start doing stuff. Put out banner signs or, you know, start calling. I chose the calling route, but you're not gonna do a deal just reading books and watching YouTube. So. That's what I would do is understand that it's not, it's not going to happen overnight. It might happen faster than one year. You know, I'm kind of, most people don't, it doesn't take one year, but for me it took one year, but also understand it's going to be hard work and just take action would be my top three um, tips for anyone trying, trying to start So you out. think if, uh, if that stuff was done when you were coming in, you think you would have got a deal a lot faster than one year? 100%. 100%. I know I would have. I know I would have. I was spending a lot of hours, like I said, taking action, but it wasn't the right action. You know, like if I just zeroed in on just being obsessive with doing 200, 300 dials a day, I would have got a deal way faster if I was just a little more consistent in taking action. You know, not going for a week and then fall off for another week and a half and then have to reset again. And if I just went hard and just did what I needed to, it would have came way, way faster. Wow, exactly. I agree with that. And so what is your plans going forward? Are you planning on sticking to wholesaling? You're going to go into buy and hold? Or are you going to do some development? What is your plans going into the future? Yeah, I mean, long-term goal, I think, for everyone should be really having a nice rental portfolio. You know, we're trying to play Monopoly in real life out here, you know? You know it. <laughs> so that's the end goal. I mean, for now, I'm just trying to wholesale. I'm just trying to build, you know, wholesaling is just a nice ATM, man, like, it's the possibilities are endless. That's why I could never, I, I, I did not want to walk away when it got frustrated. Cause I'm like, man, if I just make this work and I can be the first one to have first access to deeply discounted kind of properties, then I can do whatever I want with. I can use it for a rental, I can flip. So that's why I stuck with it. And so for me, it's just, I'm gonna keep wholesaling for now. And you know, once that good deal comes along that I wanna, that I wanna hold, you know, we're definitely gonna take it down and start taking down some rental properties. And then in the future, I've not thought that far yet, but if commercial fall, you know, falls in my lap and it works out, we'll, we'll go with it. But I'm just taking it one day at a time right now. You say a deal's a deal, right? Yeah, exactly. If numbers make sense, why not? All right, let's see if we got any questions on here. Is this live going to be saved so I can watch the whole thing? Yeah, it's going to be saved on my YouTube channel at Chris Monroe STL. Uh, the people are watching here in the Woke Real Estate Investors Group. 
where we talk about, you know, wholesaling, virtual wholesaling, because I'm a big advocate of virtual. I know a lot of people right. teach it the other way, but I, I've done uh, 15 wholesale deals and met three sellers. So I'm like, why am I going to meet them? But that's man, just how I do. Got, we got to talk, Chris. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, I got you, man. But that's, that's what we talk really about good. in the Woke Real Estate Investors Group. And also yeah. anybody that's want to connect uh, with me, my website is wokerealestate.com. And uh, Elijah, what, what, if somebody want to connect with you, how do they reach out to you on uh, social media or what do you do? Yeah, I'm, I'm heavy on social media. I, I have like two lives, you know, like the, the Elijah life is on Facebook. I'm actually a, a full-time DJ as well. So my Instagram, I'm pretty active on that. That's kind of my DJ platform. But now I put a lot of uh, real estate content on there. Um, so it's DJ B-A-N-K-E. So that's B as in Bravo, A-N-K-E as in Echo, DJ Banky. One word on Instagram. What kind of music do you DJ? So I'm originally from West Africa, man. So I'm from Nigeria, born and raised. So a lot of my a lot of my um my audience is um, African Caribbeans. But I mean, I DJ everything, you know, from from Afrobeat with Africans to to the dancehall reggae to hip hop. I get hired by um, hip hop promoters all the time. So whatever music is needed, man, I show up. I know that's right. I used to DJ yeah. too. Don't tell everybody though. Oh, <laughs> we gotta collaborate, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's see if I got any other questions on here. This interview is everything. Major Nuggets from Sarah. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, I think that's all I got for questions on here. Other than that, um, I think we got to wrap up, Mr. Elijah. So um, sure. I, I see you're doing big things. What market are you in anyway? I didn't even ask you that. I'm in the Twin Cities, uh, Minnesota, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay, up north. So, yeah, you're not too yeah. far from here. I'm down here in St. Yeah. Louis. So. Yeah, we're in so other than that, we're about to get up out of here and do some more woke stuff. Follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. There's Snapchat, there's Twitter, there's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's YouTube, all of the social media, easy to find at Chris Monroe STL. And like I said, my website is wokerealestate.com. Got contracts, uh, all of the stuff I do, every training tool that I use, every marketing strategy that I use, all that stuff is listed right on wokerealestate.com. Other than that, I think we're about to get up out of here, y'all. Do what you do, be who you be, and I'll see you before you see me.